What's it doing, Bobby? What's it doing, Bobby? Bob. Formerly known as <laughs> Bobby is not Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, Hello everyone, welcome to our monthly lecture series on health and nutrition um, brought to you by Healthy Pets Veterinary Hospital, Small Club, and Muttville. Um, we're very fortunate to have Dr. Adam with here, us here every month to share his knowledge and, um, and we are love to be able to share the topics with you this month. We're doing homemade recipes for dogs, so like actually going over specifics of what you can make, how to make it, some, um, and details on when you might choose to make your dog a certain recipe over another. Um, I guess I, I would just like to briefly say that um, our dogs, uh, we have witnessed them eating homemade food and the positive impact it's had on their health. Um, dogs who started out sick have become well, and dogs who were already in pretty good shape maintained their health for a long time and had good, healthy lives, which is what all of us want for our pets. Um, dogs have evolved over thousands of years to live with us, and they've evolved digestive systems to eat the same kinds of foods we do. So I would encourage you, you know, the next time someone tries to tell you you're spoiling your pet, by feeding them homemade food, um, you know, think you can think to yourself that you could leave your dog in the backyard, and, or you could have them in your house as part of your family, and you could feed your dog kibble, or you could feed them real healthy foods that make them a, a true part of your family um, that you want to keep around for as long as possible. And I will let Adam explain to us some of the other health benefits that you'll see from eating fresh, whole foods. Um, I have to say, my own health has improved since I started feeding my dogs whole foods <laughs> because I noticed you know, what I was doing with myself as well. Uh, we are all volunteers here, and Adam volunteers his time. And as a thank you to Muttville for donating their space to us, we ask that the general public donate uh, $5 to that is going to help dogs who are currently looking for homes and also looking to eat some good homemade food. Uh, so I'm going to pass around this jar and um, enjoy our lectures. Thank you. Thank you, Russell. Thanks, Marie. Thanks, Mudville. Um, Thank you, Dr. Adam. Thanks for coming. So uh, we're going to continue our uh, lecture series on dog nutrition uh, I guess you know, we, always, we always come back to you know what what do we feed them to help them with this problem that they're having, be it you know arthritis, lameness, you know digestive issues, skin issues. Uh, uh, you know, is there is there some perfect food that that dogs can have that there's, that's going to take it all away? You know, it's uh, it seems that you know lots of people have ex good experience with raw food. Some will do homemade diet. You know, some some people feel pretty cool about feeding their dogs dry food, and it does seem to work for a while. You know, so you definitely you know if you have a dog with strong constitution, you know they'll do okay with the kibble uh, for most part. You know, there there is definitely there's definitely uh, repercussions of eating the same thing over and over again, uh, as in like if you're challenged with something that's not familiar to you, you're going to get upset by it. So, um, so that, that's one of the biggest things I see in my in my patients of health care. You know, it's the dogs that are are on this like mo mononutrient diet will will be not very flexible in, in their ability to to digest things. So you know, but they go to for a for two hours. They go to the park, pick up something from it from the uh, from the grass. Boom, like things start flying out of them. So, um, 
you know, so if you don't use it, you lose it. So it's important to um, to make sure our dogs have strong, healthy gas. And one of the ways of going about it is to incorporate uh, fresh food in, in their diet. Um, Uh, Beowulf is doing a, this month is all about food, so I did a little piece uh, about you know, how to incorporate uh, fresh food into, into geriatric dog's nutrition. It, it, kinda, it pertains to, uh, to dogs of, of, of any age, you know, of, of all ages. So, but, you know, as, as we get older, it seems that our nutritional requirements do change, as in, you know, we need, we need those antioxidants and those B vitamins that, 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 that uh, that seem to you know, give us more energy and, and help fight the inflammation that happens as our parts wear down and wear out. Um, so I, I had an idea for next month's topic, you know, and it is inflammation. You know, no one, everyone's really afraid of it, but no one really knows what it is. So, and no one really knows how much is too much and how much is just, just right, just enough. So, um, mental note. Okay, uh, I anyway, got it. So, um, <laughs> I so got it down. <laughs> for today, I, um, I prepared um, three types of diets, you know, uh, um, and um, so I did a beef formula, I did a chicken formula, and I did a, a turkey or fish formula. So they are respectively for uh, tonifying blood, which is to help moisturize the surface, help dogs that are very dry on their coat, that have lots of dandruff, that have dry feet. Um, that have poor stamina. Um, then the uh, the chicken diet is a is a warming, tonifying diet that's really good for dogs that have digestive issues, very weak digestion, uh, inflammatory bowel disease. Um, and then the uh, the cooling formula is for dogs that run hot, as in your know, dogs that are up all night, panting, shifting around, you know, going through a bowl of water in a matter of minutes. Um, uh, and they just feel warmth to attach. You know, they they are very heat intolerant. Um, you know, they, you see their eyes turning opaque white. Uh, it's the same with the nails. Um, so so we talk about how to you know how to use food to combat inflammation. So um, but of course you know um, nutrition is a very uh, you know nutrition is a very uh, I don't think there's really consensus on like what to feed to our dogs nor to people, you know, to, to stay healthy. So if there's no laws telling you how to feed your dog. You, you can feed them dog food, you can feed them boiled shoes, you can feed them whatever you want, you know. So there, there's no laws, like there's no, uh, you know, they, they are voluntary organizations, you know. One, there's one called the AAFCO, which certifies um, animal feeds from dog food to cat food to, uh, to, to pig food to horse food. Uh, and it certifies for presence of certain minimum um, requirements that, um, you know, the AFCO studies, you know, basically entail, for dog foods entail, you know, getting a group of dogs and feeding them certain food for half a year, you know, so if they don't get horribly sick from it, um, AFCO approved. Um, so, you know, again, is the, it does, it, does it guarantee that you're going to feed your dog a good quality food if you feed AFCO um, formula as well, you know, and remind you that any formula that's in the market is AAFCO approved. So from like the worst market brands to to you know nature's variety and, and, and origin, you know, they're all AAFCO certified. So it's a pretty uh, basic standard, you know, it's not really like a health standard, it's a, it's a survive, survive like, you know, can your dog survive on it? You know, is, is it going to cause upward sickness? You know, do we know those groups of dogs that were recruited for those studies? Well, we, we don't know, you know. So um, so what do I think of as as, a, as healthy nutrition? Well, I, I think of it as a, as a habit. You know, it's a habit of eating, um, you know, as wide of the, of the variety of food and as fresh of, of food as possible. And, you know, what's in season, what, what's local. Uh, you know, you, you don't want your food traveling thousands of miles, you know, ripening in a way, or, you know, a lot, a lot is lost in the process of cooking and canning and, and drying and, you know, I guess freezing is okay, you know, I guess you cannot have everything right out of the garden. Well, you can, but, you know, it's a, the, the expense certainly rises as, you know, as we go for those, you know, super fresh, picked yesterday, organic ingredients, um, you know, so we have to be kind of practical um, with our dogs. Um, 
you know, the dog food doesn't cost a lot, um, but you know, if you make batches of homemade diet or eating raw foods to, to, a, to a big dog or group of big dogs, if you have a group of big dogs at home, you know, it definitely hits your pocket. So, so most people, you know, go for cable because, because it's convenient and, they, and you can get it at a pretty decent price. And it doesn't go bad, you know, it's a, it's, it's a very convenient solution to feeding your dogs, but again, not, not many dogs will do well on it for very long. So, you know, so how do you, uh, you know, so we live in a city and it's really tough to, to give up kibble. So what do we do to um, to make sure it's the best quality? Well, you do your research, you know, and, and you ask around and, and you go on, on the website and they tell you, you know, what wonderful veggies and fruits and antioxidants you, they put in, in that food, you know, and then you open a bag of kibble and you scoop it out and it's this, and it's cereal, right? It's like this brown to gray cereal. Sometimes there's dry peas and carrots in it, you know, if you're lucky. So, um, but it's about it, you know, it's not really a, um, a very fresh food. You know, it's, it's, not, it's not supposed to be, you know, you're supposed to be able to put in your basement for a year and, and it's still gonna be okay a year later. So it's, you know, it's not really something that I would wanna eat or I don't think many of you would want to eat. So, and here we are like, you know, here we are like, you know, carrying our dogs like babies and, you know, and, and spending $5,000 on a cruciate surgery and we still feed them this stuff. So, um, and again, you know, the, there's a really good article in the uh, in in Beowulf on the uh, on a history of the of pet food industry in this in this in this country. And it's not like you know negative or anything. It's it's, it's very factual. You know, so it's just you know you get to read why you know why no more horse meat for dogs, for mm -hmm. example. It's it, it's 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 a, it's a good article. Um, anyways, you know, so. Um, so how do you feed your dogs? You know, how do you choose what is the right type of food for your dog? Uh, well, no two, two dogs are alike, just like no two people are alike. So, so you got to look at you know age, breed, activity level, home environment, you know, and even the climate and weather. You know, you feed dogs differently when it's hot outside, uh, and you feed them differently when it's really cold outside or when it's snowing. So, um, uh, and you know, as seasons pass, you know, maybe not here but elsewhere, you know. The, you know, temperatures change, uh, humidity levels change. Uh, so all of these things uh, affect the body and, and how the body is run. And, you know, and you have to put different fuel in it to make it run smooth. Um, and again, the same is true about uh, dogs. Like, like Russell mentioned, you know, we have, we've kind of, we've came to the same evolutionary point um, as in dogs, maybe from, from two different starting points. You know, they, they were kind of carnivorous hunters and we were, plant eating herbivores, but we converged to, uh, you know, to make a pretty, uh, pretty cool uh, team, you know, they, they go out, sniff, sniff things out for us, you know, find things for us, you know, we go and, and club it down and eat it, and, and they get the bones, you know, so it's a pretty good relationship. Um, so, a uh, few other disclaimers before we dive into the, uh, the actual recipes, you know, so most individuals will have a bad reaction to some type of food, you know, I, I, I don't know anyone who can eat, eat it all or like it all. So, you know, as you go through um, your diet trials, you know, as you, as you start increasing the nutrient diversity in your dog's food, you will notice that, you know, it's sometimes a really hard sell on vegetables, you know, like this, or, or, or fruit, you know, or, or if you put a can of sardine in, in, in the diet, you know, it's, forget about it, you know, so, and some things they'll always go for. Um, you know, of course, some dogs will always go for anything. However, you know, you also look at what comes out of them. So if 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 there is no change in the fecal consistency, if the poops are good, you know, there is no shakedown um, along the intestinal tract, there is no burping, there's no gassiness, there's no loose stools, there's no mucus, well, it's going pretty well. Next day, try a new type of food, you know, do another food challenge. Um, uh, if things are not so happy, you know, if it's, if the stomach's, you know, louder than your car engine and 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 there's you know they're they're out at midnight straining and uh, twenty places well it's that that food is not working too well for your dog so um, so yes there are breakdowns you know along the process you know it's uh, you could bet on you know you can kind of put all your eggs in one basket and feed them the same type of food all the time and perhaps you know there is more yeah I guess there is you know more consistency in in poop output. However, you know, what you lose is the, the ability to challenge your dog or, or your dog challenge itself, himself or herself and, and um, uh, 
with uh, you know a, a, as you you know after a few weeks to a few months of, of food trials and incorporating more and more food into your dog's life you will notice that they will be very very resilient to to changes and and you know, they'll get a bit wonky in their poops you know if you do too much of, of something very new uh, but you know for the most part they'll be way more um resilient to to changes um what else you know how much you would feed our dogs well it also depends on um on food and and general health and body type you know so um body condition versus, versus ideal weight activity level you know it seems that some dogs can burn through it all and and they're never gain too much weight you know sometimes these, these dogs actually are the dogs that aren't very food oriented and there's dogs that you know they don't really give them much food but it's really hard for them to lose weight um and it is the case with you know as as dogs get older as dogs get bigger you know it seems that you know per pound they require less amount of calories so you have to you know think of the caloric uh, density of the food you know do you give them you know rice and milk which is very nutritionally dense or do you give them you know meat and vegetables which which has a fairly low or much lower um, caloric density so um so you know as as you're uh, and we got this you know, a bit more uh, when we go over recipes you know we talk about how to use carbohydrates to either you know restrict or increase your caloric your dog's caloric intake uh, and increase the, uh, the the caloric um content and caloric density of of the homemade diet um general rules well you know look at the, the the can of dog food you know it's pretty much the same rule so about the uh, one cup or quarter pound uh, of moist food for each 10 to let's say 20 pounds of body weight twice a day so um uh and you know i assume a, a fairly decent activity level where they do get out at least twice a twice a day for 15 to 20 minute walk um you know, Excuse me. How much did you say per day for 20 pounds of? For this dog? Yeah, yeah, she's uh, a little overweight already. Oh, uh, <laughs> then, she, then she just the cup then, a cup twice a day, and with the with the midday snack of cucumbers and yogurt. Um, <laughs> so uh, a cup of a cup of food twice a day, so two cups. Yes. Yeah. 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 Um, so chihuahua would be a cup a day, half cup, one. See, like they could probably have the same amount of food. Um, well, and well, okay. I guess you know she's not like super spun up either, I think, you know. So, um, but she's definitely not in as good of a body condition as um, as this doggy. So, yeah. so yeah, this is you know where you definitely feed different amount of food per pound of body weight. Okay. What was the pound? Did you said a quarter of a pound of food for every twenty pounds twice a day? Uh, I know I was very I was very hazy here. I, I said between ten. One, one cup of food or four ounces for each 10 to 20 pounds. So, so, so you know, so I guess to rephrase, you know, if you have a 10 pound dog and it's a very active dog, you do a cup twice a day. If you have a very sluggish dog, you do half a cup. Twice. So, when you're saying cups, you're talking about a what homemade cups? diet, not yes. a kibble diet. Not a kibble, not a kibble, you know. So, uh, Yes, I'm sure this all pertains to uh, to to wet foods and, and, and homemade diets and raw foods as well. You know, I guess they're all uh, wet foods with you know, about 70 to 75 percent moisture content. So, um, you know, versus dry food. You know, if you want to compare dry food to wet food, you have to rehydrate the dry food by adding about equal amount of water to the kibble and let it you know soak it up, and that's when you end up with a product that's that's you know close to 70 percent moisture, and that's when you have your um, cup to cup volume comparison between you know raw foods, canned foods, homemade diets, and 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 soaked dry food, uh, which is why um, you know it, it's only half a cup of dry food twice a day for let's say ten pound dog, but a cup of wet food for the same dog. You know, so it's so it's usually the conversion is about uh, one to two. Could you take into account the moisture or whatever the Water in uh, home cooked food. Exactly. Right? I mean, if you squeeze the water out, you know, it's, if you if you're going to squeeze the water out and make it what kibble is, it would only be half of it by volume. Mm -hmm. So, okay. um, so yeah. So it's like you know, which is like why adding water to your dog's food is a, a very good 
weight losing technique or weight losing technique because you can trick them to think they're eating a lot of food even though it's very watery. Mm. Um, that is probably like you know the the simplest weight loss program for a dog is you know cut the dry food in half, add water, you know a tablespoon of yogurt for flavor, and you know you really haven't decreased the volume of food eaten, but you've cut the caloric intake by fifty percent, which is pretty radical. So, um, and like I mentioned, you know for most overweight dogs, carbohydrates, you know starches, you know rice, brown rice, potatoes are optional. And sometimes it's not even recommended um, unless you're dealing with, with very weak, um, exhausted patients that have that has multiple deficiencies. You know, so if you're dealing with patient that has very bad digestion, you you're gonna have to be doing some type of bland diet. You know, some type of a very easy to digest food, and 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 these will be somewhat starchy or, or carb heavy. Um, so um, so let's go, you know, just so we can uh, use the same language in those recipes, uh, and, and then when we start going over your guys' recipes, you know, let's let's just agree on certain terms. So so you know, so when you make homemade diet, you will have ingredients like base food ingredients, and then you have supplements. Uh, so things that you use to fortify the food, which is a uh, you know what we all do those days because we worry about the nutrient content and micronutrient content of our foods that you know. Are grown on, on soils that that are somewhat depleted. You know, when you when you buy sustainable products uh, from stable farms or organic farms, you know, usually the uh, the quality of the soil is better, so you get more micronutrients. You know, food taste tastes taste richer if you get you know mass-produced vegetables and, and fruit. You know, the, the taste can be kind of like think of like store-bought tomatoes. You know, they don't really have that much flavor. So. Um, so we fortify the foods to make sure, you know, because we really worry about something missing in our dog's diet, which is, you know, why we are so, like, stuck on this bag of dog food, because, you know, the guys at Hills, you know, put enough stuff in there to make your dog last. Um, so ingredients. So we have carbohydrates, you know, these, uh, it is important that they get cooked well before serving. Uh, you know, if you start seeing rice in your dog's food or brown rice or husks of, of oatmeal, um, yeah, you have not... Uh, you have not chopped it down enough. You have not cooked it enough. Um, you know, dogs have very short digestive tract. You know, again, we we are omnivorous scavengers, but you know, because of their background, they they only have a third of the gut length that we do. So so they cannot really process fiber as efficiently as as we can. Um, they can process bones much better, raw bones, and we cannot. You know, but but we have a, an upper hand on digesting fiber. Um, so. Uh, so whole grains, you know, so, so you always want to go for, for whole foods, you know, things, you know, like, like there's this, there's this drive to find this perfect food, like, oh, like goji berries were found, like and noni berries and, and acai, and it's going to just fix everything. You know, there's one ingredient that was found somewhere, it's supposed to like fix all the deficiencies and, and, and take your cancer away. Well, no, you know, we don't really know what, what it takes to, to stay healthy, so, so, so eat what your ancestors to eat, you know, like whole foods, like foods that came, like that you actually see what, what they are, and there's no mystery ingredients, you, you, there's no question about, uh, you know, how how they arrive, you know, ha what happened to them before they should up in front of you. So, um, so you know, brown rice has way more fiber and has a germ um, or, or a little, um, Seed of the uh, of, of of the plant, you know, that's where all the nucleic acids and B vitamins live. It's like it's like liver of of of, of a seed, you know. That's that's where all the good stuff is. Um, you know, whole wheat, whole barley, quinoa, oats, um, and then then we have simple starches. So well cooked white rice, potatoes, yams, cornmeal, um, protein. Uh, we have muscle meats, which you know ought to be ground or chopped, uh, you know, any, anything between 5 to 25% fat content. You cook those lightly, um, or, you know, the, the second best is, is canned, uh, canned meats, for example, like, you know, Spam is, a, is like a beef pork combo, and, uh, you know, you can use a, uh, you can use tuna, I suppose. Um, and I guess, you know, I, I wouldn't personally eat canned meat too much, so, um, and, it's, and it's plenty available. So, um, so yeah, when you do a homemade diet or, or homemade diet supplement for the kibble, just get 
whatever you get for yourself at the supermarket as far as the as meat goes. Um, the other thing is, you know, don't burn it. Um, you know, as you cook things, they change, um, and and protein does. Uh, change during the uh, as you heat it, you know, it denatures. Um, so, you know, what I see in my practice is that sometimes you know dogs are allergic to to chicken containing foods, but they're fine with raw chicken. You know, so and it just doesn't make sense. But when you think of cooking with protein, the raw protein well, it's, it like completely refolds and and changes shape. So when the antibodies see that protein, it, it's a different protein. So. Um, uh, and you know other things. If you if you cook oils too much, you know they they lose their antioxidant uh, property. In fact, if you if you oxidize fats, if you burn them, they become quite carcinogenic. As you know, as as what you know, we see what happens with people that eat lots of burnt fats. You know, you end up eventually end up with, with colon cancer uh, because it's so abrasive. It's so bad for your for your uh, colonic mucosa. Um, so um, we can use foods for their thermogenic properties. Yeah, that is a quick question. Yes. So for people, they would say, cook your meat thoroughly. You don't want your chicken to be pink or your yes. hamburger to be pink. But yes. that's not the case for dogs, then. No, you know, dogs are are more resilient to uh, to bacteria, to to spoilage in their foods. You know, that's not to say that they couldn't get, you know. Clostridium or bachelors, you know, they they're weak or there's something wrong with their intestines. But for most part, you know, when you think of dogs going to the beach or park and eating poop, you know, it's it's a, it's a pretty serious stuff, you know. And <laughs> so they don't seem, they don't seem to care about things like Good salmonella, enough. you know, or E. coli. They they seem to do quite well on it. Um, you know, when, when you know when you when you buy frozen foods for dogs, like like prepared foods <laughs> like primal, you know, these actually have way lower bacterial counts on them than food that you buy for yourself in the supermarket because you know the, the raw foods are actually intended for for raw consumption versus like the ground meat that you buy you know you better cook it thoroughly because it's a lot of cows and and whatever else is in it you know and, and you don't really know where it's been how long it's been out how many freeze cycles it went through so they really want you to to get to kill that um clostridium bacteria which otherwise you get botulism and and well, you wouldn't die, it's readable, but you know, it's, it's just pretty unpleasant. Um, so, um, so the uh, thermogenic properties of foods, you know, so, so I know if you uh, know this about yourself, like yourself, you know, like some foods will warm you up, you know, if you, if you feel very cold or you're having a cold, you, you know, you make yourself some, some, uh, some, some chicken and some noodles. If you're very hot, you know, you, you drink an ice drink. So that is the, the temperature of the food, but actually, you know, certain foods will generate different amount of heat in your body as they get processed. So, um, and this is, you know, this is a scene when you eat something for prolonged periods of time, you know, it might not happen from, like, you want, you know, start sweating when you eat a piece of chicken or lamb, or, or start shivering when you eat a piece of fish, but, you know, if you eat that way for a very long time, you know, this this refers, like, the, the, the thermogenic properties refers to a kind of traditional Chinese medicine um, perspective on food, you know, and, and how, um, you know, how consuming certain things affect your body, as in, like, do you run hot from it, or, or do you not run hot from it, you know, so does it actually dispel inflammation, so you tend to, like, not sweat all the time and not have hot flashes, so, um, and it's been experimented, you know, it's been tested for 4,000 years, so, and they wrote plenty about it, so, um, it, it's, it's actually, you know, very, you know, the TCM, the, you know, acupuncture, tuina, diet, herbs, and qigong, you know, they, they're, they are extensively researched. Um, so, um, so warming foods, you know, chicken, lamb, venison, salmon, you know, salmon, like fish, we don't really think of as, as a very warming food, but salmon is one of the, like, few very oily fish, very yang, very up, upward fish that, that, that tends to have warming properties. Um, neutral moisturizing um, meats, you know, beef, buffalo, venison, duck, turkey, salmon is another one that actually, okay, I guess it's a, it's a warming to neutral, but it's moisturizing. And then cooling protein sources, pork, turkey, white fish like tilapia, so halibut, rabbit, and duck. Um, so, um, and then we have organ meats, which are very, very cooling. So if the muscle meat is warming relatively, you know, if, if there is a yin and yang to everything, well, muscle meats are yang, organ meats are yin. So they are, they are more cooling, more more tonifying, more moisturizing. Um, so organ meats are very rich in protein, 
just like the muscle meat, you know, and mm -hmm. but they have way more essential fats and you know things that are stored in, in fats like like trace minerals and um, and 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 some other um, trace minerals and trace my, my trace nutrients. Um, you know, B vitamins are stored in in organ meats as well. Um, do you want to cook them? No, I mean they're nice and cooling. You should keep them that way. You can scald them if you use things like tripe or, or gizzards. You can you can run them under hot water or you can scald them quickly uh, in, in, a, in a boiling water. Kind of you know zap the surface, you know decontaminate the, the surface because that's where the bacteria lives. You know unless the other animal died of um, sepsis, you know the 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 bacteria is only on the surface, not throughout the meat. Um, so. Um, so examples would be liver, heart, gizzards, or tripe, tendons, and ligaments. You know, so sometimes when you go to the butcher, you can actually see you know cow tendons that actually make really good, make really good for for dogs, and talk about a great glucosamine conversion source. Um, then we have dietary fiber. So you know we have veggies and fruits. You know veggies are root veggies like carrots, radish, beet, parsnips. You know these are very rich. Um, um, Vegetables with lots of micronutrients and trace minerals because you know they are they live in the dirt so they can absorb what's in the dirt. Uh, you know, then we have tubers which are kind of fast growing, um, fairly fast growing plants uh, like like zucchini, yellow squash, winter squashes. Um, we have leafy, we have greens which are like you know leafy vegetables or, or flowery things like broccoli, cauliflower, collard greens, cabbage, uh, celery, parsley, mustard greens, spinach, dandelion, like all the things with little yellow flowers on them are like really nice for, for dogs as well. We have legumes, you know, beans and, and peas. Um, uh, we have seeds like walnuts, ground flax, coconut, um, and you know, fruit. We have you know, really nice, a whole bunch of stone fruit, like you know, so apples. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry, stone, stone fruit is like one of the, uh, the pigments, so um, avocado, um, uh, nectarine, uh, peach, cherry, um, I guess apples are, are still good as well. Um, and then we have papaya, pineapple, berries, citrus fruit, uh, which, you know, aren't really some that you, th that you think of when you think of feeding your dog, but actually some dogs are into it. You know, some dogs do like oranges. Yeah, you'd be surprised actually what, what dogs like to eat. Um, and then, you know, I like, like I mentioned, supplements are used to fortify homemade diets and prevent nutritional deficiencies or make up for low nutrient density in food ingredients. Um, and, you know, if you want to make a batch of homemade diet, you know, then you dump the right amount in, um, in a batch as it cools down. Um, you know, you, have to, you don't want to cook those things because they're, like, the more you cook them, the more you break them down. Um, so they're best actually to, to be added right before you feed. Um, and then you you can just like flip the thing and, and see how much you need to add for your for your dog's weight. Uh, so a very common ones, you know, things that are not optional, that things that do need to go into a homemade diet, you know, is calcium. So you have to, uh, you know, as you dogs are not really meant to be eating muscle meats only. You know, they they eat bones as well and plenty of them, plenty of that stuff. You know, so they they need a, a certain calcium to phosphorus ratio. So it um, it comes out that for each pound of ground muscle meat, they need about three grams of calcium. So that can be supplied in the form of a, a powdered calcium carbonate, um, which you know can be excavated from the from seabed, you know, like, like a dry calcium, uh, sorry, like dry uh, sea kelp, or or you can have a uh, you can use a bone meal as well. So um, so ground up bone of, of, of beef or or pork. Um, then you want multivitamins, micronutrients, and trace mineral supplements. Um, and, and again, this is what is put in processed foods, you know, both dry and wet food, to make sure the label does meet the AAFCO, AAFCO standards. You know, um, you know, is the are there nutrients in vegetables or fruits or or brown rice? Yes, there's tons of them, and, and they're probably if you use good quality ingredients, they're going to outweigh that powder, but. You know, let's make it simple and let's not worry about it. Let's just put some of the green powder in, and you know, and we put in everything we need in there. Um, some optional uh, supplements, you know, enzyme and probiotic supplements, um, essential fatty acids like like fish oil concentrate, uh, flax oil, uh, safflower oil, coconut oil. Uh, there is glandular tannics like glucosamine chondroitin, uh, so connective tissue. Um, uh, precursors, 
sophisticated organ concentrates like like liver, spleen, heart. Um, most of those, you know, I guess, no one really. Uh, these is not these are not not really easy to come by. Usually, glandulars you have to buy, uh, like you have to actually buy them, you know, and they've been highly highly refined and highly concentrated. So, um, and then antioxidants. Uh, antioxidants have like vitamin E, uh, selenium, vitamin C, um, OPC or grapeseed extracts. You know, there's this whole group of of uh, micronutrients called oligomeric polyanthrocyanidins, and these are like they're bioflavonoids from and and skin and seed of of berries and and other fruits and vegetables, and 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 these seem to have a, a very strong free radical scavenging. Uh, properties. So you know they they help to vacuum up all those reactive molecules that are generated in the process of inflammation. So you know when you get inflamed, when you get when you get red, well you, your liver eventually chops this stuff down. But um, you know but all those free radicals you know scrape and, and punch holes and burn your cells as well, which you know which kind of keeps that inflammatory cycle rolling. You know it's a, it's it, it can be a quite vicious cycle. Um, so taking antioxidants helps to siphon off uh, free radicals, which you know, which impacts um, how quickly you get over the inflammatory response. Uh, supplement sources: um, I use uh, animal essentials a lot. You know, I I, I carry about four, uh, five uh, lines of supplements in my practice, and uh, that I've researched, you know, and and. And make sure they come from good source, and, and talk to the owners or, or, or reps from the company who actually come to to the site, and and uh, you know, so animal essentials, you know, you can get those. Um, Pet, Food Express, Pet Food Express actually carries animal essentials, and you can get it online as well. Uh, Standard Process, um, they make lots of glandulars. So if you have a you know, dog or, or a cat with with organ dysfunction, like heart problems or or liver problems, you know that that. that that's like a, a gold standard in glandular therapy, um, and and that's dispensed only under supervision of a doctor. So you have to go to your chiropractic or to a vet to get it. Uh, Vetri Science uh, is in Essex, Vermont, really good company, good quality stuff. They make things like Glycoflex um, and Fast Balance GI, which is this wonderful doggy chiropractic that that uh, that will stop diarrhea and vomiting within 12 hours, oftentimes. So um, and it's like you know this. Thick, rich, gooey clay, kale, and pectin, kind of what goes into um, our um, fast acting and acids and coating agents like, like Pepto Bismol. Thorn Research is a human uh, supplement company, but they have you know, a small doggy division or, or pet division, so they, so they carry some pet specific um, supplements, but of course, you can use human supplements as well. Uh, Nordic Naturals is a, you know, they, they are kind of gold, gold standard as far as uh, quality omega 3 fatty acid, you know, from it's usually from like a Nordic, uh, from North Sea um, fisheries, you know, and, and they get it from from cat, uh, from from liver cat, from sardines. Um, these are the the most common sources, and um, and they do they do concentrates as in like you know, they concentrate the oil and they microfilter it. They actually pass it through through a membrane, so the oil travels up and all the heavy stuff settles and and the the cleanest fractions spill over into the, into collecting vats. So it's pretty cool. Uh, process and, and it's all cold. There's again, there's no heat involved in, in any of, of processing of, of those supplements. Um, you know, does it matter uh, what kind of supplement you put in to fortify the food? Absolutely. You know, people bring me you know tubs of things from Costco or or Safeway, and they say like, "Well, is this good enough?" I'm like, "I have no idea. Like, I really don't. You know, so I I don't know what it is. You know, it looks good in the label and." But you know, we gotta remember that you know FDA doesn't really make any stipulations, or or you know, when you get a supplement, there is no assurance that that anything will will happen because of the supplement. There's no guarantees for the for the effect of the supplement, and you know the you know, and, and many of them are, I'm sure, are produced. Like with the best intent and heart, but you know, you have to know how to process fresh foods to, you know, to come up with a processed product that retains some of the qualities of the original product. You know, you cannot just put things in a vat and boil it for two hours, 
and then pulverize it, you know, dry it up in capsules. You know, it's it's, it's not the same thing. You know, so um, so yeah, the quality of the supplement uh, does matter. So you know, if you if you don't trust your doctor or veterinarian to uh, that you know they have your best interests in mind when they recommend something, you know, do your research because you don't want to. You know, what if you say fifty percent on something that doesn't do anything for your dog? Can I ask a question about omega threes? Is it true that if you actually smell it and it smells fishy, that that that's actually means that it's gone bad, right? Right. No. So fishy taste is like is there are there are the esters of, of certain oils, you know, and that is that is the um, <coughs> what you smell is oxidized oils, like rancidity basically, you know. Oh right. Put in front of a cat, like you know, if, if you put a, a, a piece of meat in front of a cat that's not super fresh, like they smell it, you know, they they smell rancid stuff and. And you know, evolution. Not dogs. You know, dogs like it rancid. You know, but because <laughs> it aren't, you know, scavengers. You know, will will smell it right away. And it is. You know, these are those volatile fatty acids that that kind of linger. Like once they hit your nasal passage, you know, you, you know they're there. Well, we don't. But you know, if you're a cat or or, or a dog. Um, so so yes, if it's if it's really really fishy, it probably wasn't processed properly and or wasn't refrigerated or maybe it was exposed. To air too much, I'm a bit distrustful. You know, like the grizzly does makes a very good product. You know, the grizzly salmon oil, but I'm kind of worried about like the air tightness of it. You know, and they mm -hmm. don't really make any recommendations uh, as far as like you know keeping it in the fridge. The uh, the reaction time tends to decrease tremendously. Like everything, everything spoils, everything rusts, everything oxidizes over time. They're, you know, like you know chemical reactions go on. We don't live on a frozen planet now. So, uh, but if you put things in the fridge, it does cut the reaction time at least in half, you know? So, so you can try to get twice as long out of the bottle of fish oil that you just spent, you know, 30 bucks on versus if it's, if it's, if it's standing in a, in full sun, you know, on a, on a window ledge and it's, and it gets stuck, you know, hot and cold, hot and cold, you know, it, it stuff happens. Um, so, um, so yeah, if it smells bad, don't give it to your dog. Um, if it smells fishy, if it's if it smells rancid, if, if there's some like weird acrid taste to it, uh, uh, you know, if, if your dog, if you know your dog well, and you you feel that they'll do okay with this food, or you want to like you know see how strong their gut is, well, go for it. <laughs> you know, definitely giving my dog some funky looking, you know, raw chicken wings or chicken necks that were kind of going slightly green, and and there was no shake down at all. Uh, but I wouldn't like do it, you know, for a dog that's just starting to grow food diet. Um, because you know they need to, you know, having strong, strong uh, gut isn't just about muscular strength or having powerful digestive juices. It's actually having some bacteria in there that are that are strong and they are, you know, you have resident bacteria in your gut that can, you know, if you if you eat some bad bacteria, they say ah like you know keep going like I'm occupied like you know we cannot really attach here. So that is how probiotics work. You know they they're good bacteria that that occupy space. On the walls of the gut and prevent the bad bacteria from sticking to the gut wall. So, mm -hmm. and you know, because we have evolved together with certain bacteria, you know, they are at least commensal, if, if not symbiotic. You know, so as they digest, you know, big fiber molecules, they actually, you know, re release things. You know, like B vitamins, and not to mention that we actually eat them. Like you know, they they do all this work and and then we spray them with with acid. You know, and, and we eat them. So. Um, so, um, I'm sorry, I, I digressed. Um, yes, no, no funky smelling foods, no, no green foods, no, no spoiled foods, no, no rancid fats, no super fishy smelling oils. Um, I have one more question about the fish oils. Mm -hmm. So I know that fish oils range from like salmon oil to anchovy to krill. Mm -hmm. Do you have amongst that range? Do you prefer a certain one of those different types of fish, or? Mm hmm Well, you know, when you uh, so omega threes aren't really made by animals. They are made by plants. They're 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 fatty acids that are made by uh, by algae and 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 grasses. You know, as as they as they germinate. Uh, so, in case of fish oil, well, you know, the, the microalgae that produces omega three fatty acids get gets consumed by plankton. So then the plankton is going to be a very good, you know, rich source. It's going to, you know, it's going to take up all those omega-3s. Well, then plankton gets eaten by, 
by shrimp, you know, and shrimp gets eaten by by cod. So it's the process of bioaccumulation, you know. So there there's a ton of omega three fatty acids in cod liver, but not because cod made it. It's because it it's eaten so much of 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 those omega three containing foods that its body oil content is is such that, 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 that you know the animals are really highly saturated with omega three fatty acids as opposed to omega six, nine, twelve, fifteen, eighteen fatty acids. You know, so uh, and it seems that those um, like um, because like the structure of the of the fatty acid molecules, the omega threes tend to uh, those um, fatty acids are fuel. I'm sorry, they're a substrate for production of inflammatory substances. So our white blood cells, our leukocytes you know, grab a fatty molecule from its membrane and hopefully it's an omega-3 fatty acid molecule and and they chop it into inflammatory substances, you know, when there is a need for it. So so that's how cellular language is produced. You know, you produce you, you produce molecules to signal something to, to cells around you. Uh, and you know, and it seems like the language changes if you pull omega threes from your membrane or versus if you pull omega twenty ones from your membrane. Um, it seems like it gets louder and really, you know, it's like cursing if you like, if you pull omega 18 versus omega 3. Omega 3 is like calm language, you know, it's uh, mm -hmm. like, don't freak out, like, yeah, it's, we're getting attacked, but, you know, don't freak out about it, uh, it's not so bad. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so, and this, so the same idea applies to, you know, us or our dogs eating omega 3 fatty acids, and you slowly saturate our bodies with omega 3s, you know, it's not an overnight anti inflammatory, it takes, you know, takes consistent eating of it uh, to uh, to see the changes and how the body make, uh, mounts inflammation. You know, how much reaction we have um, to a given stimulus. You know, and, and I guarantee you, if you have eaten your fish oil, you'll be less reactive. You'll have less, you know, smaller bumps from the insect bites, and, and you'll have you know less swelling if you twist your ankle. Uh, your body will just will not react as strongly. Uh, so the inflammatory process will be you know, not as super spiky. Uh, so to answer your question, uh, what's the best source? Well, you know, it seems that um, dogs do best with um, with animal with animal source omega threes, uh, but it can be you know, it can be krill oil, it can be cod liver oil. Uh, again, the source is very important. You know, if, if you want to get it from fish that that didn't swim in, in nasty waters, you know, where there's mercury and and cadmium and all those other nasty chemicals, or you know, you want to get a product that's that's been processed in a way to remove those heavy metals. And you know, there's stuff in the ocean. You know, it's it's getting pretty dirty. You know, there's pesticide residues and hormones and antidepressants and there's all this stuff. All those like plastics residues end up in the water, and and um, you know, and it does. And some of those are fat soluble, as in like you know, they they are they bind to fats and they stick to fats, you know, so if you eat something that's fatty, you get those things along with it. Um, plant sources of omega-3 fatty acids, uh, you know, ground flax is a very good source of it. And some dogs do almost as good on it as on uh, on fish oils. So if you, if you ground really well, if you buy ground flax, um, or if you run it yourself, or if you get a cold-pressed flax oil, you know, some dogs do pretty well on it. Um, yeah, fatty acids again are, are good as far as inflammation. They also, you know, and you know, inflammation. When you think of inflammation, lots of, lots of it has to do with blood flow. Like when you when you get inflamed, you're red. You have like the blood vessels open up, right? You, you get flushed. You get flushed. You know. So well, it's the same. Like when you have a dog that has really bad circulation to its feet and it has really dry feet that left his, he or she is licking all the time. Well, you feed them those fatty acids, and uh, and and behold, like you know, all. Of, all of a sudden, like the circulation opens up, you have better blood flow to the extremities and and to the surface of the skin, and and the dendrop goes away. You know, so you actually are able to nourish your skin better. Like you send you send blood very very far from the core, from the heart, you know, and goes to the tips. So, um, you know, I like my patients to have nice black pads like that match their nose. You know, if I if I see my patients you know having dry pads or cracking, I don't like it. So uh, that's why I tell them, you know, how, you know, what do you do here? Like, you know, what do, you, well, how do we open up th those blood vessels? How do we improve the circulation through through the through, uh, through the feet? And and oftentimes it is uh, using essential fatty acids, you know, such as fish oil, avocado, 
liver uh, can sardines, uh, fresh sardines. Good question. Yes. Hi. I have a question about the vitamins. And I think mm -hmm. you mentioned avocado. Mm -hmm. There are a number of sources that avocado shouldn't be. Mm -hmm. I'm interested in your feedback on that. So about the vitamins, sure. I've looked, looked into many of the vitamins on the list here, and mm -hmm. each one of them has something that dogs aren't supposed to be given. Mm -hmm. um, the herbal multivitamin from Animal Essentials, which is pretty clean, mm -hmm. has garlic, mm -hmm. for example. Mm -hmm. um, and the basic k and nutrients of thorn research has things other than multivitamin vitamins and minerals, mm -hmm. and also has it's sort of, it's balanced for a very active pedogging competition, mm -hmm. basically, Look except up. for an average, you know, city dog. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering, and I noticed you don't list balancing on your list of multivitamins. Uh, yeah, I, I have friends who do this list. So I'm wondering um, about those issues mm -hmm. and um, how you feel about balance mm -hmm. it, and if you found a multivitamin mineral supplement that's really balanced mm -hmm. that um, doesn't have all sorts of Well, you know, to, to address your question about, you know, things that dogs shouldn't have, um, I think I think dogs do just fine on the garlic and, uh, and avocado. You know, in fact, you know, when you think of shouldn't process dogs with like avocado, that's, they, they use a lot of avocado in it. And, and actually, it's very helpful for dogs that have dry skin. You know, actually, you know, they, the dendrite goes away, you know, because of the essential fatty acids. Yes, the, you know, there there are toxic principles in the skin, seed, leaves, and bark of avocado tree. However, the the actual meat of the avocado is is perfectly edible to humans and and dogs. So, and I know there are sources that that you know that say that, that it's poisonous to dogs. Uh, um, like I mentioned, you know, there are certain foods that will. That would not agree with with some individuals, you know. I, I I can I give my dogs plenty of grapes, but you know some dogs would have very bad reaction to grapes or raisins, you know. So, um, you know, it's definitely not good to you know try to give your dog a little chocolate. You got to be hyper for hours, you know, because of the stimulant. So, um, um, onion, you know, like onion tends to um, change the shape of hemoglobin of a dog. So if you if you feed onion containing foods for a period of time, you actually end up causing anemia or, or very quick destruction of red blood cells. You know, people use garlic all the time. It is in, mo in most uh, sleep preventative treats. You know, you have your B vitamins and and, and garlic oil or, or actual chopped garlic. Um, garlic is a very warm warm oil. You know, so it can cause heartburn. So if you have a dog that has tendency to run hot or you know it's drinking a lot, eating grass all the time. As in has gastritis, has has hot stomach. You know, you, you can see it on the gums as well. Like the mouth is very uh, hot, and there's lots of uh, tartar, lots of buildup on the teeth. You know, these dogs should not have garlic, uh, and these dogs maybe shouldn't have avocado because it's very heavy too. So you know, so it can actually induce uh, stomach acid secretion. So um, um, you know. I, so I do use animal essentials, even though it has garlic in it. Um, I, you know, as far as the you know thorn being you know good for uh, you know performance, not for, uh, you know working dogs, not city dogs. Well, you know I don't think you can um, you can give dogs too many B vitamins or antioxidants. You know, it seems that city dogs deal with plenty of stressors to warrant extra vitamins. Uh, yeah, they don't exercise as much, but you know, they there's plenty of other stressors that that can warrant you know adding extra things to their uh, to their diet. You know, as as in using you know, high performance multivitamin. Um, as far as balance it, you know, again, I I don't carry it. It's a it's over the counter, right? You know, so I I, I don't carry it. I I haven't used it myself. But again, there's so many things out in the market. You know, and if you've done your research and you feel good about the product, go for it. You know, it's a uh, you know, it's as long as you you feel it will fill any gaps in what the food that you're using might be missing, it's fine by me. Again, if you if you use you no, know, if you use <laughs> if you like like a let's say a, a diet of 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 soaked brown rice that brown rice that's been soaked overnight and germinated, and you know, and, and lightly cooked meats and organ meats and and lightly wilted vegetables, there's probably no need to add anything. But you're adding it because it makes you feel good. It makes you feel like you're making the diet complete. And go for it. You know, again, you cannot overdose it. 
it's, it's a scoop, you know, for high funds of value eight, well, two, two scoops, you know, nothing, nothing bad gonna happen. The fee's gonna be more yellow for a day. That's about it, you know. So you'll see that those the excess B vitamins coming out, but otherwise, you know, there is a, I mean, there is a reason why these things are over the counter because it's really hard to overdose on them or or get sick from them. So you don't worry about too much vitamin A or vitamin K with high soluble vitamins. Uh, not vitamin K. Uh, you can eat as much vitamin K as you want. Vitamin A, I, I've unless you are using you know fish oil with lots of vitamin A in it, the most multivitamins have a pretty small amounts of vitamin A, as in uh, you have to use very, very high amounts of it. No, it's just, it's just, it's not a big part of multivitamin, the fat soluble ones. So usually these will come with your oil supplement, like if, if you do omega-3 fatty acid supplements, you know, that, that's where you can get the vitamin A in. Um, though actually I wouldn't recommend that because, you know, that we're talking about, you know, concentrate, concentrates and, and, and like really high amounts of, of that stuff. And I think if you use enough organ meats like liver, that's going to take care of your vitamin A requirements. You know, there is a, you know, the USDA has a, um, you know, how do you find out like, you know, what are you really feeding your dog? Well, you know, if you feed your dogs things like rice or, or pasta or meat, well, you know, you can, you can reference it and you can find out like exactly how much vitamin A is in it or calcium or phosphorus or calories, you know, so, so then you can, there's a website called that balance it. It's, uh, and there's, uh, and USDA has a website where you can uh, punch in, um, it's on one of oh, yeah. my, my uh, first diet write-ups, you know, there, there's a couple of websites where you can go and punch in like, you know, 100 grams of 10% of chicken and it'll, it'll give you a breakdown of, of what's in it. And, and, and if you want to do a homemade diet where you, you know, calculate everything and, and, and you take those numbers and you compare them against the AAFCO basic requirements, you're going to be like so far above it, you know? So, um, so yeah, and, you know, it's, it's, it's very time consuming, you know? So what, what I feel works best for my dogs and my patients is that, you know, that you, that you create diversity and you, and you, uh, feed variety of foods, you know? So, um, you'd have to feed a lot of liver to get into vitamin A toxicity, like a lot of liver. Uh, so, um, and again, when you think of wild canids, you know, carnivorous animals, you know, that, that's usually what they, you know, they, they go for their prey, they open the belly, they, they scoop up the insides, so they, so they get a lot of A vitamins, vitamin A, you know, so, um, so, you know, again, the, the poison foods, you know, that you, uh, you know, and, and it's and it's probably more than just garlic and avocado. That 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 is that has been labeled recently as, as you know things that dogs shouldn't have. I, I don't know why. Like I, I I'm not really sure why it, it happened. And, and the grapes I had heard, but I've right. fed grapes to dogs before, and so right. I was wondering, like, are there fruits that you consider we should stay away from? I thought raisins were on that list. Grapes and raisins. Yeah, it, it seems I mean, like I... there's a there's a pretty proportion um, as far as the, uh, incidence of of dogs getting sick from certain foods. It seems that dogs that eat raisins and grapes are a lot of them are likely to get sick from that. Oh, okay. You know, does it really cause liver failure or just I just have said, well, who knows? You know, yeah. it, it, apparently it's a, it's a, it's either the fungus that's on it or or they, there are very strong um, pigments in the skin of the uh, of the grapes. Uh, and, and this can cause anaphylaxis or, or allergy reaction. Um, uh, so yeah, onions are not good to feed chronically. Um, you know, garlic, again, I, 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 most of my clients probably put garlic in their dog's food and there's no issues with that. Um, avocado, you know, go, go on Avoderm website because, you know, it's like, they're like, that is the first, <laughs> yeah. their main page is like, hey people, like, there's nothing wrong with avocados given to your dog. Um, so, just on the dogs. so again, you know, like most of, of dogs, most dogs, most of us will have a bad reaction to some food at some point. Um, you know, sometimes it's kind of, it's like a red herring, you know, you maybe like they've, they've been, you know, you just brought your dog from a four hour hike at Fort Funston and, and dog didn't have any water. You, you give this dog anything, it's going to vomit it. Or, you know, it's because like yeah. arthritis, colitis brewing and, and you know, unless you're like smart enough to 
to, to just you know, cook some rice and put some coconut water in it and have them drink that either dog only for the rest of the day, they might have a pretty nasty bout of diarrhea the next day or, or they'll start hacking and coughing and, and having acid reflux. So, okay. you know, like if you if you deprive your intestinal lining of, of blood flow, it's going to slough. It's going to get altered. Yeah. Actually, speaking of coconut, um, what about coconut oil? It just seems to be really trendy these days, too, for, for people as well right. as dogs. It's definitely very trendy. So, yeah, it's one of the essential oils that you can use, uh, and, and it does impact the circulation. So, you know, lots of dogs will have a very nice... You, you you improve the coat quality and reduce the dander by using coconut oil. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, there's nothing wrong with it. It's a uh, it's a it's a saturated fat, you know, which I guess you know right. these are bad for people, you know, like like butter. But uh, something can, about it being a medium chain, you know, right, right. And all that you, stuff know, you know, you know, and if all this you know cool in moderation, like just don't mm -hmm. overeat certain things or you know. Well, it's very calorie dense, so that's the thing too, right? So you wouldn't. So is so is any fat, you know, especially <laughs> congealed fat. I mean, so is butter or margarine or, I mean, I guess it's a little bit more. You know, yeah, it, it is. It is calorie dense. It, it, you know, fats are the most calorie dense foods. Um, you know, nine kilocalories per gram versus you know four for carbohydrates and proteins. So it's twice as calorie density. However, you know, there is a cost associated with associated with processing food, you know, like if you eat a teaspoon of fat, you know, your body has to spend a lot of energy of, uh, on chopping it down and making it into, you know, uh, into glucose, you know, it, it's, it takes, you know, it takes some investment versus when you eat a, a teaspoon of, of sugar, which requires, you know, a few enzymes in the saliva to, to, to cleave into glucose. So, so the investment is minimal. So, so the net caloric gain is not as different as you think from, you know, from from simple sugars mm -hmm. uh, and fats. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is different. You know, it's a little bit different, but it's not like dramatically different. So, so that's the basic uh, tenets of of, uh, of of food. You know, so like I said, you know, dogs like dogs like to hang with us because they like our food. You know, so think of of our diet as you know, one third starches, one third uh, meat and fat, and one third um, vegetables and fruit. Um, it's like the, you know, I guess a bit of a altered food pyramid. Like there's not meats and fats anymore, and 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 veggies and and fruit and starches on the bottom. Uh, that is like the, the that's like the old American diet where where you eat nothing but toast and cereal and, and starchy <laughs> things, which. Um, I'm sorry, I, just, I was just going to ask a question about the calcium. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, where can you, I've just been, I was trying like the eggshells and then I get kind of cumbersome, like who knows. Um, where do you find <laughs> yeah. this at? I mean, I was just getting like the ones I take. Is that okay? Or? Yeah. You know, I mean, here you can't go wrong with calcium carbonate. You know, it's a, I mean, it's a pretty simple salt. Um, it is in everything. It, it is in plants. It is in our bones. Um, it can be made synthetically. Um, it's definitely in a, um, in eggshells. You know, when I when I do a when I when I crack eggs in my dog's homemade diet, I, I just crumble them. You know, I, I don't really like dry bake them and dry them and grind them and powder them. Oh my god, like you know, give me a break. Um, you know, but, but I I don't really cook them. You know, I don't really. I, I crack my eggs in the homemade diet when when I'm done lightly cooking the meat and organ meats, you know. So so when I crack the egg, you know, the white will change, like it'll, it'll go opaque, you know. But the but the yolk, I'll I'll keep runny. So and and, and when the, all the white is congealed, you know, heat is off, you know, I kind of crumble the shell, fold in the the yolk, you know, so the so the shell never really. Cooked and just like just like with bones, you know, it's it's, uh, it's safe to give your dog raw bone because they have the digestive apparatus to actually decalcify the bone in their stomach very very quickly because they have very very acidic stomachs. Um, you know, the same with and when you cook the bone, it's kind of like baking it in a very specific shape. So so dogs kind of leach it out. You know, they have to pass it in pretty big chunks, which tends to cause lots of alterations, lots of scraping. The same with, with eggshells. You know, if, if it's raw. It'll be decalcified if it's if it's baked or cooked. You know, it's uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be pretty it's gonna be pretty um, it's gonna be harder to to digest and decalcify. 
Could I put eggs in the blender and then that way we crack the eggshells? Sure. Yeah. yeah, and and if it's like very very tiny pieces, then you could cook it more without worrying about you know the the, the shards of of egg shell being too big to the point where it's causing any type of um, abrasive action on the lining of the intestine. How about uh, things like for de de detoxification, like liver? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, what, what would you recommend? <laughs> okay, so, you know, liver liver likes green things, liver likes sour sour things, you know, so liver likes thistle and dandelion, um, you know, and, and, and collard beans and, and cruciferous veggies, uh, and like sour things like apples and, and mm -hmm. sauerkraut. Um, yeah, you know, well, what is what is the most common liver cleanse? You know, it's it's a uh, milk thistle, dandelion, artichoke. All uh, right, you know, so these are like these are very common liver cleansers. You know, so so um, so like lots of B vitamins. You know, so these pigments, you know, will go like as, when you eat them, they'll go to your liver first, and that's when those B vitamins are stored. Mm -hmm. And you know, so liver, I guess, is. And liver needs them, you know. Liver does a ton of work every day. If if it's if it's deprived, if it doesn't get all the right fuel it needs, you you're gonna have a very dirty system because your filter is not working properly. So and that and actually impacts the inflammation. Like if your if your liver doesn't vacuum and chop down all those inflammatory substances, well, before you know it, you'll be scratching your skin off. You know, mm -hmm. so. Um, that's why that's why you act photophobic when you're when you have liver failure. Like you're in the sun because you know there, it's you know sun hitting your skin produces induces an inflammatory reaction actually. So um, I'm gonna scratch it off. <laughs> I, um, so you say here that um, stir an egg white stir an eggs till whites are cooked. So the yellows don't have to be cooked. Just the white has to be cooked. Yes. So this this pertains back to um, you know how much heating cooking. Oxidizing you want to do to the fat, to the dietary fats, you know, and dietary fats are really best to eat in, in their raw state, you know, be it plant oils, you know, like like coconut oil or um, or like walnuts, you know, like you don't want to, I mean, you can bake them, but you know, it's really nutritious to eat walnuts because they're full of raw oil, um, you know, egg yolks. Yeah, it is. I feel when it comes to fats, I, I like them in the least changed state, you know, so so I, I cook the grains really well, I, I lightly cook the meat, but the fats I, I leave alone. Okay, so I have three sample diets, you know, and, uh, and again, this is a, you know, we live in a very litigious state and times, you know, and, and, and I'm sure this like probably will come back to bite me at some point because you know, I because <laughs> I stick my neck out to tell you what to feed their dogs and that and not send them to to pet store pet food store to get a bag of something, you know, but uh, this is kinda my suffering for the sake of dogs, you know. So um, <laughs> because I really feel that if you feed your you know, it's like I I, I feel when I when I'm not too busy and, and crazy and like preoccupied with stuff and actually pay attention to what I eat, I feel better and I look better, you know, and I and I feel stronger. <laughs> and I don't. I don't see why this shouldn't apply to dogs as well. Uh, you know, I, I. I don't. You know, so. So I say to my clients, hey. You know, how about some some fresh food on top of that kibble, or you know, like add something to it, like make it more interesting. It's it's, it's it, you know, like would you be eating like a, a, a same bag of cereal all the time? Um, you know, even even if it's you know, and when you, when we think of like cereals, um, like. Like Cheers or whole wheat, like you know, they're like they're so fortified with 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 vitamins and minerals and everything. But you know, you, your body has like other needs that that than carbohydrates and and fat and and protein and and vitamin B through twelve. You know, there, there's other stuff. You know, that you know some things we know about, some things we don't. You know, I. I, you know, it's, I think it's probably to assume that we know everything about nutrition. So, so again, I, I feel that your best bet is to to eat as wide as possible. You know, to to tap into as many nutrient sources as possible. You know, some kind of work for your body type. So, eating all the time, like you know, maybe, maybe you love brown rice, and and it seems like you can survive with brown rice alone. And and yeah, like many cultures survive on on very little fat brown brown rice. You know, so. Or you know, or you feel that like you really do best when you 
eat like nothing but meat and veggies and, and, and the carbs just make you horribly congested. Well, yeah, totally. I, I, I get like that when I get, you know, when I hit 35, you know, that's what happens. Like it's, you know, like body slows down and you cannot, you cannot really deal with the, the caloric density on certain foods. It's just too much. It's, it's like, it's like choking the engine. It's, it's, you, you put too rich of a fuel in it and, and, and you get flammy. Like you get this, like, your, your your digestive process cannot separate the good stuff from bad stuff, so you, so you get congested. Um, so so on to three basic diets. You know, one is a is a beef diet. The other one is chicken diet. The uh, third one is a cooling turkey or fish diet. You know, why did I choose those diets? Because you know, um, because you know of the conditions. I I feel these diets are really good for. Uh, so, um, basic beef, you know, so in this, when you, if you live in this area for long enough, you, you notice that it's really, it gets really, really dry, and, um, and despite the fog hanging, you know, when it's sunny and, and bright and the wind picks up, you know, it's a very cold wind, it tends to, it tends to steal your moisture, so your throat gets dry, you know, you get lumps in your neck, you know, your, your nails turn opaque, um, you get dandruff, the same thing happens to dogs, so, um, so you want to what do you want to do? You want to kind of open up circulation to the to the extremities, and you want to provide fatty. You want to provide fat. You know, fats are like a fats. You know, we put out on on our skin to actually seal the moisture in. That is what the fats are for. You know, on the surface. You know, it's so so the wind blows. You know, the skin doesn't start cracking. Uh, if you don't believe me, like you know, wash wash your uh, wash your skin with soap and go to the beach and and see how how quickly you start peeling when when the wind is blowing on it. Um, so, um, so this food, uh, you know, it's like a, I, on the bottom I did like a, like a carb protein to fat ratio and, and you know, so, some of you will have dogs that don't have very strong digestion, you know, and, and if you want to make foods blander for them, you increase the, the carbohydrate part of the, of the, of the recipe, you know, so instead of doing a you know, pound of beef, pound of veggies and pound of, pound of brown rice, you know, maybe you do a pound of beef, pound of veggies, and two pounds of brown rice, you know, so you actually, like think of a bland diet that, that a vet tells you to, to give your dog when they have stomach upset, you know, it's, it's a very, you know, the more starchy the food is, the, the easier it is, it is on the digestive tract, um, you know, the less digestive juices is required to, to mix in with it, to, to break it down and, and absorb it, so, um, so again, you can play with the uh, with the carbohydrate content of, of this recipe. If you are going to use those diets on top of the dry food because you know you want to kind of play it safe and you and you do half carbohydrate, um, sorry, half, half dog food, half um, half homemade diets, you can probably skip the carbs altogether because you know the kibble is 50% flour anyway. So that is your protein and fat fortified cereal. Uh, you don't really need any more. Um, you don't need any more carbohydrates in there. And if you do, if you overcarb your dog, they get heavy very, very quickly. Um, so, so the beef, so basically beef is a, so it's like BBB, you know, blood tonic like formula. So, uh, so resolve dryness on skin, feet, eyes, you know, if you have like dry, you know, KCS, like your know, dry eye, this would be a good formula for, uh, for those dogs. Nourish coat, nur you know, when you dry on the surface, you're also very dry on the inside. Um, and that specifically affects circulation, microcirculation to tendons and ligaments, you know, and, and, and connective tissue and discs, you know. So usually when I see a dog that's super dry and flaky, um, they're gonna have, they're probably gonna have a torn cruciate or, 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 or back pain. They have ruptured their disc because the discs are not very plastic anymore, you know, that they have cracked. Instead of being nice and gummy, they are like an old weather plastic which you find on the beach. And if you apply pressure to it, it just cracks. So, um, you know, some places in the body, if you break them, they're broken for good. And it, this, that is the case with the, with, with the disc or ligaments for that matter, you know. So you better keep them in a very good, uh, good working condition. If you, if, you, if you move to the dry climate and you experience dryness, you know, make, you know the, the same circulation that you have to the skin goes on the inside to your tendons and ligaments, you know. So it's a good, it's a good mirror of, of where you're, where your stretch connective tissue is, you know, by looking at your uh, at your own skin. So what does uh, you know, so and when you dry, you know, we call it liver blood deficiency because liver is supposed to generate blood and send it to the extremities. And when you dry, you have liver blood deficiency. So what does liver 
like well, liver likes you know green things uh, and root vegetables like um, like carrots, uh, beets, uh, you know broccoli, bok choy, cruciferous vegetables, um, and you know, these should be you know steamed, chopped and lightly steamed. Um, some other common blood panics is the kind of rich and gooey things like eggs, sardines, uh, liver, organ meats, uh, fish oil, uh, coconut oil, um, and uh, and this recipe calls for brown rice. Uh, so this so you can use brown rice to kind of um, again you know affect how rich the food is. So if you if your dog is like super duper in its guts, you can and needs to lose weight you. This is probably a good, um, like this, this is a one part carb, two part protein and fat, you know, and two part veggies works pretty well for, for overweight dogs. So we basically want to kind of shift towards Atkins diet thing. You, know, you want to change the, the protein to carb ratio by, you know, so you want more protein, less carbs. Um, so basic cooking instructions, uh, you dump the, uh, the pound of ground you can use a little olive oil or whatever, you know, uh, um, or butter or whatever you want to use. Um, you have the, the pound of ground beef in the pan, uh, you know, you stir it around. Um, you can cover it if you want to kind of quickly parboil it. Um, once it turns color, like once the pink is gone, um, that's when you throw in the chopped liver and kind of gently fry it really quickly. Uh, when that is almost done, what I do is I shut off the heat, crack my eggs, and I, it's like the eggs cook and they cool down the pan as well. So by the time I'm done, and this is like, this usually is about three minutes or so. You know, people complain that it takes a long time. Well, I don't know, I guess some people are, and not me, but like my partner does all the living. So, you know, but, uh, but some people are really quick about it. You know, some people are like, no, like it's just half, 30 minutes, it took me an hour and a half. Well, yeah, <laughs> practice makes perfect. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, um, so once you are done with your meat and fat, uh, the recipe calls for can of sardines. So you can throw in a can of sardines and, and, and vegetable oil or or salty brine. You know, is it like is it really salty? To is a lot of is a lot of salt to add a four ounce can of sardines and, and salty brine to this recipe. You know, if you if you taste it, then you should. Is not very salty at all. So uh, you really do take a bite of the, your dog's homemade food, oh, right? I do, I do, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, but it's, Unless but, you're vegetarian. But, but it's, uh, <laughs> it's, it's the same stuff that I eat myself, you know? So, yeah, yeah I'm, I don't eat it, but I taste it, you know? I, I mean, well, I, it should be healthy enough that you can eat a scoop of it yourself and it shouldn't make any difference. Unless you're vegetarian. Right, right. no, <laughs> if, yes. Like you know, if you, uh, <laughs> yes, if you, uh, if you're into uh, you know beef and and liver. sardine and liver, <laughs> and, you know, and, uh, fish, some people are so so uh, so then when you cook when the meats and fats are cooked you know that's when you kind of fold in your lightly steam or, or very finely chopped uh, leafy greens um, and uh, you know again you want to cook those as well as possible to um, so you want, you want to like cook out all the good stuff in it, like like the B vitamins, um, and then you can use a little salt to taste, you know. And again, this is where you need to like stick your finger in and make and, and see if it if it tastes good. You know, dogs definitely like salty things. You know, like give them a, a, a chip, they love it. You know, so salt is very tasty, sugar is very tasty, fat is very tasty. So these are kind of universal, tasty things. Um, so um, so you know, like, and there's some. Uh, I mean, there's some saltiness to to tissues as well. You know, we're not like saltless creatures, you know, creature. You know, so so it's okay to add a little. Uh, you know, if you want your micronutrients and like things from the sea, like you know, use sea salt. Like it's a very good, you know, iodine micronutrient supplement. Um, and, and will they go to kidney failure from quarter teaspoon of like of, of sea salt in, in, in the two pound batch of food? No, not likely. Um, so and then supplements. You know, six grams of powdered calcium carbonate because we're gonna have that's pretty much like almost two pounds of meat and fat, um, one tablespoon of omega-3 fatty acids, um, two tablespoons of powdered multivitamin. Uh, you know, and these, again, the calcium you can fold in uh, while you're cooking it because it's kind of 
cooked, you know, it's uh, it's elemental. You can't really change it, no matter how much you cook it. It's all, mm -hmm. only going to be calcium carbonate or, or calcium citrate or some other salt of calcium. Um, so uh, the other things, you know, the omega-3, like if you just mix it with a batch, well, you know, it's going to be probably a little bit rancid a few days down the road because it's exposed to air and it's been kind of heated up too. Those multivitamins, you know, like you put them in and as you heat them, as you ex as you make them wet, as you expose them to air, they actually start breaking down as well. Um, so, like, you know, would you, would you drink a, a glass of carrot juice that you, that you, did like fresh squeeze three days ago. Mm -hmm. You know, it's going to be the same orange juice, probably not. You know, there's some fizzing out of nutrients uh, and some oxidation again, you know, the process of spoilage, you know, which were oxygen particles, you know, attached to things and you know, and, uh, and made them go all. So, uh, so, um, okay, so meat, meats and fats, veggies and, and carbs is the order that I do my, um, my home diet in. Uh, and uh, and again, the uh, if you do add one pound of um, I think it's supposed to be one pound of of, uh, of well cooked brown rice, it would be about a uh, one to two to two ratio of the carb protein and the fiber. Can I ask you it's oh, so hard to find okay. organic fiber. We know they where. Have organic. They have natural. Mm -hmm. It's naturally raised, yeah. They had it before. They have organic chicken liver, but not organic chicken liver. I can recommend a, a great source for, for meats that are organic and also usually certified humane as well. It's a cooperative that I belong to called SF Raw. And they sell uh, meats, meats, organ meats um, from your typical proteins. And they also actually offer, if you have a dog who can't eat typical proteins, they, also, they always have. You know, they have the rabbit, the lamb. The, um, you, know, you can get your tripe there and all these things. And it's, I, I highly recommend it. Uh, they have good prices as well. Yeah. Yeah, it's, 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 you know, I mean, like, think of the quality of food that you buy for yourself, you know, and what if you get that organic stuff, you know, like, you know, huge agro-business does, or, you know, makes organic products now, or organic products that was, that, that was raised by very unstable means, and, and on soil, that, yeah, maybe there was no, there's no pesticides in it, but it's core we will feed it, you know, so it, mm -hmm. it's not, it won't be the, you won't have the nutrient content that you would have, like from a small organic vegetable garden. You know, it's, again, like stuff that makes plants is from the from the dirt. So, um, and again, it's more than just you know water and, and, and carbon dioxide that makes plants. So there's there's that as well. So, um, so yeah, but you know, but try to you know, of course, like yes, it's how. You know, doesn't matter if the food is fresh. Yes, it should be fresh. If you cannot do fresh, you know, get frozen. That applies both to meats and, and vegetables. You know, if you cannot get frozen veggies, you know, get canned veggies. Um, but you know, the, the, the less processed it is, you know, the the most nutrient content it it usually hold, holds on to. Um, so because again, as you add, as you add heat to the air, to the in the processing of, of different foods, you actually damage the 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 nutritional value of it. Mm -hmm. Like think of the like antioxidant strains. Like you, you wouldn't like you know do a apple and carrot and ginger uh, juice in your juicer and, and then boil it. That would, that would kind of defeat the purpose of it. Um, so, um, so the second diet is a. Uh, so the first one was for like for dry for dry dogs. Um, the second one is for dogs that are very cold. So this applies to like geriatric dogs that are always shaking. Very small breed, you know, dogs that are like that have very high metabolic rate and they just need easy calories. Otherwise, you know, they they're never happy. You know, so they're in fact they're under stress. So, um, so any type of you know digestive tract weakness, you, you can uh, use warming, uh, tonifying foods to uh, to help with that. You know, think of when you have like really bad runs or or, or or food poisoning. Well, that's when you go for your chicken noodle soup, and this is kind of like a chicken noodle recipe. Uh, for dogs, it's going to be a bit drier. However, you know, if you need to, when you're serving it, you can use hot water to make it wetter. You can, you can actually make it into a stew or a soup, and make broth in the process. So when you have a dog that's 
that is going through a part of gastroenteritis, you know, it's a um, uh, you know, it's, you can actually use this diet to, to make more isonic fluids and uh, and force more hydration into your dehydrated dog. Well, because I was going to ask, maybe you'll get, are you going to get to the reheating process, like if you do make a batch? Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, sure. Well, we can talk about it now. Um, yes, the reheating, you know, usually it is done, you can pour hot water over it. Okay. You know, so you can use the, the heat of the water to make it. As opposed to recooking in a pan or my grate or something. Yeah, you can, you can use this. I mean, you can do it too. I mean, okay. yeah, my craving is definitely, you know, like you heat up water molecules, you know, and, and they start giving energy off to everything else around them, you know. So, well, I know how you feel about microwave ovens, you know, and, and people, some people definitely don't want to use them because, yeah, yeah. you know, what it might do to to the shape of the molecules, you know, and, <coughs> and how it alters how it's water itself. So, yeah. and, and since we're all made of water, we if you do want to know what kind of water you put into your body. Yeah. Um, so um, you're heating in a pan. Well, you know, if you have a big group of dogs and you're going to making lots of it, well, maybe you can have like a big wok or something and you just quickly like stir fry it, warm it up. Yeah. Okay. Otherwise, otherwise, hot water works pretty well. Okay. You know, I guess my craving would be convenient. Yeah, that's so, okay. yeah. What do you think about, I microwave my dogs, I buy them uh, pet fresh mm -hmm. tubes and then I microwave it because if I put it out cold, he won't eat it. Mm -hmm. Do you think that's damaging to dogs to feed them microwave food? Well, not any more than to people. Okay. Uh, and, you know, again, the, the jury's still out on, like, what does, but, I mean, it's, mm -hmm. you know, billions of people eat microwaveable food and, and there's really no documented side effects to using microwaves to heat up food. Um, so I think the same would apply to dogs. Again, I'm, I'm kind of trying to level with a dog and, and be like, yeah. well, again, yeah, we, you know, we're not exactly the same, but you know, as far as the quality of the food and what we do with that food and how we process it, you know, will, will affect us in similar ways. Um, so if you believe that microwaving destroys nutritional value of the food, yeah. of your food, you, would, you probably shouldn't be doing it for your dog either. Yeah. If, if you think it's, you know, it's okay, Show you the super cold. No, no, no. You know, and maybe you see like some dogs don't have like very good energy. So if you get them foods that are very, very cold, they actually get like cold diarrhea from it. You know, it's like it, it, it almost extinguishes the digestive fire. So then, then things just fall through. So for example, if I make this, if I go home tonight and make this, and I put it in the fridge, and then tomorrow I wake up, it's going to be cold. So yeah. Do I put it back from the in the stove and no, I, I mean, I, I microwave, you know, I, it is really the most, you know, yeah. do it for as short as possible and, and, and I usually add a little water, so, you know, I mm -hmm. use steam to cook it as well. Okay. That, yeah, that is really the only way to, like, water, to get it. your three dogs <laughs> meal ready in less than five minutes. You know, yeah. and, and who's got time in the morning or in the yeah. evening, you know, so, yeah. like, the again, yeah. you know, it's, uh, <laughs> like, you want to, you know, you want to be sustainable in your in your dog feeding practices because if it's too difficult if you like, oh, like it's only organic and like I cannot put the microwave, well, it's only practical. Like, you know, it's still way better than feeding them right. out of the bag all the time. You know, you're yeah. still doing so much more than most people. Yeah, so I can like get stuck on like, well, is this water filtered or, you know, <laughs> or our microwaves evil? Well, yeah, but you know, it's not gonna like impact your dog as much as whether it's eating, you know, homemade diet or, or dry food. Yeah. Right, right. That, that's right. that's what's gonna make a huge difference. Mm -hmm. so, um, so what if you destroy you know five percent or ten percent of nutrients via microwaving? Yeah. It, you know, it's, you still, still have like, better than you still yeah. have like ten yeah. times as much yeah. as if you were to feed dry food. Yeah. yeah. So, that makes sense. So you know, kind of pick your battles because yeah. you, know, you want to you want to make it practical. Um, that is really the. It's like people saying like, oh, I'll, I'll brush my dog's teeth. Yeah, right. You know, like, <laughs> no, you want because it's like. <laughs> it, you hate it, like, you know, it's not, like, you have to find something that you don't will actually chew on to clean his teeth, otherwise, like, no one's going to be chasing your dog with toothbrush for more than two days in a row, so, it's just, right. it's just not sustainable, like, it's, like, it's expectation that's, that's really, that's really hard to meet, and then you're, like, down yourself, and, anyways, um, so, so, with the chicken, you know, uh, because this is for weak dogs, kind of bland diets, you know, that's where you want to, this is going to be a blander diet, you know, and, and you can use 
half carbohydrates, you know, one quarter meat and fat and one quarter veggie. So, and it is the basic recipe for a dog, for commercial, for commercial dog food, be it, be it canned or dried. You know, it's half flour, 20, 20%, 22 to 25% protein, 8 to 10% fat, the rest is in your residue or, or, or some type of fiber, and just a little fiber, which, which, which what makes, you know, dog poop so voluminous, voluminous if they eat dog food, you know, it's, that there's all this, you know, uh, what is it, like, you know, it's, a, it's beet sugar pulp, it's it's tomato pulp, it's things that were, like, you know, you process fiber that, that cannot really be used for, I guess, can be fed to cows, and that's usually where it goes if it doesn't go into a dog food company, so. Um, so that's how you end up calling something grain-free, right, it's, it's a kill. Exactly, you know, so, right, and, and that can look crazy, it's like, well, like, my dog eats grain-free, well, fine, you know, but, you know, grains are, you know, I, I guess, like, you know, today grains are bad, you know, tomorrow you can't, you know, you're not getting enough of it, right, you know, so, like, a decade ago, eggs were responsible for people having heart attack, you know, now they're good for you, so, you know, garlic kills dogs or does it, does it kill fleas, you know, choose, choose what you want to believe, you know, it's, a hundred years ago, it's kind of a bunch of lies. So, like you know, choose <laughs> to believe in things that actually make you make your life better. You know, if you uh, you know if you feed your dog this diet and and it goes from dry and and dendrophy to beautiful and shiny and happy, you know, who cares if if you know if avocado is poisonous if, if this dog is thriving and, and and really happy on it? You know, like the proof is in the pudding. If if you know, and you see it in the quality of the of the coat and the nails. And, and pause and energy levels. Like, you know, if it makes you feel that good, it makes you look so good, how can it be bad for you? Um, you know, are, and are you like carrying some fat soluble evil like and, and building up, you know, vitamin A in your in your body because you know you want to make your skin perfect and you eat liver every day? Well yeah, that would be that would be the extreme. Like you don't, you don't do that, you know, it's a moderation, right? Like you know, you have to you can have like you cannot fix it all with mega doses of things. Mm -hmm. You know, you can you can do a quick detox if you take a thousand milligrams of vitamin C twice a day for a week. You know, that that's a that's a very good, that's a very simple detox. You know, and it works pretty well. So, or vitamin A, or vitamin E. But, um, you know, it's uh, again, if if you do find that your dog doesn't do well on something, just don't feed it to them. Um, and again, if, if you keep a variety in the in this process, you know you, your dogs will not run out of things, and they'll be healthier. You know, it's, again, that's what I see in, in my dogs when I when I when I use those principles. So um, so back to this, uh, back to the uh, the chicken and white rice or chicken or and whole wheat pasta. You know, so you can use either if you want something that has a bit of a lower glycemic index, you can use whole wheat pasta, if you want something that's very, very warm, and you can use white rice. Um, and again, it is kind of carb heavy, so it is really good for dogs with, that are emaciated, you know, dealing with a very consumptive process, uh, like like cancer, cancer process, which is you know, a very, very bad type of inflammatory disease. Um, or if, if, or dogs that have, you know, really bad digestion, you know, they, they've had, you know, years of your bowel disease, and then and, and now immune system is crashing, and 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 they're just so burnt out in their dish, and they cannot do, they don't do well on anything but chicken and rice, you know. So this is kind of like stepping it up and making it more complete, you know, adding some, putting some color back into that bland food that that, that you actually do need to use when, whenever your dog has a breakdown, like whenever, like whenever you your dog has any type of digestive upset, you do want to pull back to the simplest diet possible. You, you go back on your you know, chicken and rice formula, and once things calm down in the gut, that's when you build it back up to, to the full diet. So for a young, healthy girl who has no medical problems, who's active and energetic, and, um, seems to be able to tolerate any food, you'd recommend the beef diet regularly and then occasionally chicken with uh, problems to go on? Or what would be sure, sure. Well, you know, also, you know, you could uh, you could use the beef diet during you know, very windy months, like you know during uh, you know spring, for example. Like that's when uh, that's when everyone has allergies. You know, that's when that's when the wind hits you and like the, the ice turns red, everything turns dry. 
it's kind of when a lot of dogs actually, you know, break their connective tissue, as in tear their ligaments or, or crack a disc. Uh, and, you know, use, like, if you go to your house in Tahoe for a winter, like, your dog probably would do, this dog probably would do way better on, on a warming food, like chicken and rice. You know, the dog will not want to be eating raw foods when it's snowing. Yes, yeah, because it's, it's very, it's very cold. So, um, so again, dogs aren't really that different from us. You know, think of what you would enjoy if you look like that or felt like that. You know, or or were in the place that they are. And you know, the what is good for your dog would probably closely match to what you think is good for you. Um, so, and the final diet. And I want to keep it. Um, uh, is the is the cooling diet? You know, so lots of our dogs, you know, run hot. You know, so that so the skin is very very hot. They have, they they have you know hot mouth, hot stomach, lots of grass eating. You know, drinking all the time, ravenous appetite. You know, uh, they collect fleas like crazy because they are two degrees warmer than all the other dogs, and so uh, and fleas will find them. So um, so that is you know when we want to use cooling protein sources like turkey, fish duck, rabbit, um, you know, that's when you want to add your lots of organ meats and lots of fats because fats tend to be cooling and, uh, and yin tonifying. You know, yin is like a, like a air conditioning property of your body, basically, like the ability to cool down. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, to, uh, um, I put potatoes in this diet because lots of dogs I treat actually have damp heat, you know, uh, which is like, it's 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 hot, you know. That they're hot, but also they're, they're also flammy. They have really bad ears. They have like greasy ears and and ear infections, and um, and they have stuff between their toes, and they have anal gland problems, uh, and they're really sticky, like grease in their mouth. Um, so potatoes are are good to pull pull back the or pull out the dampness, the the, the phlegm. Uh, and the uh, the veggies for that uh, that one I you know uh, beans peas zucchini leafy greens um, so you know again you want you want it to be somewhat colorful be, you want to like you want to see all the colors of the rainbow and the food you know you want, you want like, it's all white or all yellow or all green uh, you know the, 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 like when you dry and pale and blanching you know you're gonna eat that beef formula because it's so rich it's so it's like it's like giving blood sausage you know when you're when you're like when you're cold and, and you just need energy, you, you eat this like clear chicken broth with rice and and white chicken and just makes you fly up, you know, mm -hmm. gives you energy. Mm -hmm. uh, the the cooling food is to like when you're just having hot flashes and and, and burning hot and it, it, it's very heat intolerant. You you eat foods that that bring it down. You know, think of eating mm -hmm. sushi like you know how you know, how how nice it is to on a really hot evening to go and have some sushi. Mm -hmm. um, so, or some you know, cucumber salad or cucumber with, with, with yogurt. So. So there's no um, fruit in this one. Not in this one, you know. Okay. But, but again, this is a. These are just guidelines, and you can okay. rotate things in now. You know, right. if you don't have leafy greens, you know, use use apples or, or pears. You know, I mean, you can you can substitute widely. You know, are dogs supposed to have you know, beet pulp in their diet, like, mm -hmm. what does that bring into the game, you know? So, yeah. well, why don't you use some fresh apples? I bet it's gonna bring more stuff into the diet than that's, you know, completely, you know, it's like something was like, it was just sucked dry of yeah. all the nutrients that, that, is, that, that, that is put in it, had put as, as fiber, you know? So, so you can use fresh fiber, you know, if you have some old pears, just mush them down. Put okay, them in, you know? so you shake it up a little bit. Yeah, there's, okay. I guarantee your dog will not have a bad reaction to a pair. And it's treats throughout the day too, right? Right, you know, and if you need like, you know, light treats, you know, chop up your, your pear, chop up, you know, a watermelon or, or, or honeydew or, or cantaloupe, you know, use some canned sardines, use some yogurt, use some cottage cheese, you know, make a light snack. Oh. Make really good snacks. What is the best um, on the market raw food? Like say, you're busy, you're busy and you can't make it one day. What do you think is the best? I'm using pet fresh, but do you think there's something better than that? or? Uh, yeah, um, you know, like mo most people who do raw food eating and whole feeding, you know, like find sources that are not processed because you pay so much for the fact that someone grinds it for you, mm -hmm. and your dog can do it just fine. You know, so um, as far as the ground or pre-made raw foods, um, 
you know, I, I, most of my clients will use small batch primal Jeffries um, and Nature's Rep because it's really easy to uh, to come by. You know, they say that that's Pet Food Express, mm -hmm. and they actually, you know, do have a the AAFCO certification. So you know, so they are as okay to feed the dogs as any dry food, you know, per per those standards. So, um, but you know, there's about I think there's like last time I checked, there was about 600 uh, raw raw food manufacturers in the country, and and I'm sure there's another one every day. So, 600. Yeah. That's what raw is doing that. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's raw. Like you know, is its own like entity, right? Like you know, they yeah. you guys like. Go through so much raw meat, and you know, and, and it takes like you know a relationship with, with local farmers and like, mm -hmm. local producers, you know. So, you know, you know, people like only want the leanest now, and like just the, you know just the breast of the chicken, and all the rest of it is really good for your dogs. Uh, so, and it's actually way better than the, the white meat on the chicken. Like you know, what they get from the bone marrow is so so much better than what we get from a, a lean chicken breast. Um, I wanted to quickly mention that the like the lot of the brands that you were mentioned that sell the raw meat that mm -hmm. you should not cook those because there's bone already in them that is would not right that would you would yeah, not cook. yeah but, but the bone is ground really really fine you know so and it seems like you know a lot of dogs that that I see that have just a weakness you know, they they do better if you if you like people like politely microwave them to the point where the meat turns. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't really like cook the bone. Like the, the bone shards aren't big enough to to cause a problem, you know, if they in fact don't get properly digested. Um, also, like you know, bones don't have that much of the of the mi moisture content. So if you put in the microwave, like the, the wet things get heated, you know, before the oh, it's like when you put a cup in the microwave, like you know, the water gets hot, but the cup doesn't. Mm -hmm. You know, so um, so you don't really cook them as much as you cook things that have high moisture content. Mm -hmm. Uh, and yeah, like you know, I have many patients that, that cannot do raw. Once you do it lightly, they're just fine. And that's all it takes is is light, lightly steaming it. Or veggies. Well, veggies, you know, again, if if, if you see things coming out your dog the way it was swallowed, like you know, if you see like big chunks of leafy greens and pieces of carrots and peas and uh, and ho and husk of like you know brown rice or, or big oats. Well, you know it wasn't prepared well enough. You know, they, they're like yeah, they they've sucked out what they can, but there's probably a lot of stuff that was that just spilled out. You know, so you didn't mm -hmm. really like chop it down enough to tap into all the nutrients in the food. Um, yeah, well, I was going to ask about about chopping and how finely to to process vegetables or fruits mm -hmm. so that they can get the maximum nutrients out of it versus steaming or cooking or yeah. how these how either of those help them access the, the nutrients that are in there. Well I, I think grinding, like putting things through the food processor and making them into a, a mush, like I mean you've opened up the whole carrot into I mean you you have access in, into every cell of that carrot from every direction. Right. You know, so Versus if you like slice it and steam it, well, you're still gonna, probably gonna see a piece of carrot coming out of your dog. Right. It's, it's steamed and it's maybe it's blanched, like it's pretty colorless by the time it comes out, but it's still there was still some untapped into nutrients in there. Okay. Specifically for dogs who have cancer, is it what 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 is your opinion about foods that have the higher sugar content? Is that should that be Noted or like I know like certain vegetables have a higher sugar content like peas sure. or sweet potatoes is is there a concern about that? Yeah, you know, so that relates to uh, something called a glycemic index of food. You know, so inflammatory diseases tend to tend to thrive if you eat foods that have high glycemic index. You know, so. Um, so whether you have you know inflammation or autoimmune disease or cancer, which are like all phases of inflammatory disease, like you know, um, foods of high glycemic index will be pro-inflammatory. So if you eat a table of sugar, it's gonna spike inflammation. It's, it's going to feed those very simple cells. Uh, and because because cancer cells are very simple, all they can do is take amino acids and and sugars. They don't really they're gonna Slackers, you know, they don't really do anything for our body. In fact, they're 
doing us lots of harm. Um, so, uh, so carbohydrates, you know, so, so foods that are, like starches are highly refined, like, you know, white rice, potatoes, um, you know, white flour, you know, that's what's going to cause a big spike in your blood, blood glucose level. Um, so yeah, like, you know, if you, if you have cancer, you, you probably don't want to eat cereal all day long. You want to eat, you know, your meat and veggies because that's going to have a very low glycemic index. You know, your body has to do so much work to slowly release n nutrients from that protein, fat, and fiber. You know, like it's, it's a very, very slow process. You don't get this huge spike in blood glucose level. You know, those the, those spikes of glucose level are damaging. You know, it's um, what happens is that you know if you if you eat very sugary foods like if you eat a donut. Well, you know, so your blood sugar level goes like two fifty, uh, and um, and what your body does is you know it releases insulin to to tell your liver to take this glucose and tell your muscle cells to take the glucose in. It, it's usually a bit of an overreaction. So you know, so um, so the insulin does a job, and before you know it, like half an hour later, you are craving food again because you've actually become hypoglycemic. And you're supposed to like wait through that period till you till your body releases enough cortisol to to push some liver out, to push some sugar out of the liver. So then you're normal glycemic. Uh, so 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 yes, like you know when when I guess like raw foods, you know, high protein, high vegetable, low carb foods, foods that that contain mostly complex carbohydrates, like like whole grains, you know, these would be best foods for cancer dogs. But you know, on the flip side, like you know, sometimes cancer dogs are dogs that are like so weakened, like you know, they're 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 barely hanging in there, and they're they're, they're losing, like you know, they're putting up such a tremendous fight. You know, they're they're kind of paying for both sides of the conflict. They're, they're paying for the bad cells, and they're paying for the good cells, trying to contain them. So, and and the system just drained completely. So you have to, will they have digestive strength to deal with like huge amount of fat in the diet? Probably not. You probably you might actually have to use a cheat on the firing pretty bland diet for them because you know, just to deal with their like ongoing caloric needs, you know, because you cannot really afford to break their stomach because, you know, if they're like off food for two days, you know, it's, it's really, really hard to regain it. <coughs> so. Thank you. Any other questions? Yes. Mm -hmm. Is, is one of these recipes good for Dan? No, I need to, I need to okay. come up with like a good you get a uh, special damp, one. <laughs> draining <laughs> recipe. Um, yeah, because again, it's, it's a very common pattern. You know, it's uh, How do you know if your dog is a damp, has yeah. dampness? Yeah, Dr. Adam tells you. Yeah, I mean, like, I want Dr. Adam to tell you. So you have your dogs that are like super dry. and. Oh, by the way, like both dogs will be itchy, right? You know, so like the the dry dog and a damp heat dog, you know. So the dry dog will be like flaky, dandruffy, super like this. Um, so I looked at the feet, and he's actually not not too bad. You know, it's actually pretty good moisture like levels in a in a paw pads, and yeah, there's some dryness. You you notice that like it's really black on the head, and then as you get towards the rump, it's not so black. You know, it's it's like there's like this color drop. And that this race to the circulation, the priority of the body is to deliver blood here to your butt, not so much, you know. So usually, like dogs that don't get enough nutrient, essential fats, or or that, that cannot channel moisture enough to certain places, will be super dry and itchy on the rump and the flank. Mm -hmm. So you so you so you tickle them and they just start going because mm -hmm. they're so itchy from it. As opposed to damp dogs. Dump heat, you know, and dampness tends to sink, you know, so like it sinks into your ear, kind of uh -huh. like the ear, like, goes, like waxy, nasty brown stuff in the ear, um, like armpits, inguinal areas. Um, they're very yeasty, very greasy, very flammy dogs. They, they usually have like a, like a sticky white coating on their, on their tongue as well. And what do you call that condition? Like, I guess, like she too sad, where there's their skin is itchy, but it's it's moist and it smells <laughs> funny. Because it's because of moisture, like I see it in a lot of like Shih Tzus. Well, that is damp heat, you know, That's and you can damp. call it like you know, well, you can call it you know, allergy dermatitis, sebaceous adenitis, uh, atrophy. Like there's many names for it, you know, but it basically pertains to uh, 
you know, there, there are two like humongous armies of immune system in your body. One is around your gut tube, and the other one is around your skin. So if for whatever reason, like the one under your skin activates and doesn't shut down, well, you have skin heat. You know, your your skin starts turning hot. It it usually, and if you like, weak your pores open and the oils get damped and then mm -hmm. the fluid evaporates, so you end up like sticky, greasy. You know, so uh, and then you have like you know you have strange things. I guess you eat sour things to to close the pores to astringe the liver. So like you know apples and, and sauerkraut basically. You know it's like the and radish would be good, good things to astringe the liver uh, res, and resolve the damp and pull out the dampness. You know so there there are like traditional Chinese medicine they use a koi, which is a which is a Chinese barley to pull dampness out of the body. So if you have like like sticky phlegmy arthritis or if you have any of like Phlegmy conditions, you know, chronic sinusitis, chronic rhinitis. Um, yeah, use kois as a as a carbohydrate source, uh, or you can use barley as well. I guess that's that's what that's what uh, Westerners barley. use to deal with with phlegm. Barley works for phlegm. Yeah, yeah. yeah buckwheat is pretty good also. Uh, um, I haven't used buckwheat that much, you know. I mean, I. I Buckwheat? You said buckwheat? Buckwheat, yeah. Uh, which is a type of wheat, you know, like spelt. There's like different types of you know, grains with different uh, levels yeah. of, of gluten protein in them, you know, so mm -hmm. and different levels of, of husk or, or, or fiber, you know. So, you know, like sunflower, you know, sticks great. Like, you know, sunflower, you have to put lots of eggs in it, you know, to make it stick. So, um, yeah, the, like, you know, spelt and buckwheat, you know, these tend to be more crumbly breads or, or or cereals when you make them, you know, so mm -hmm. um, versus versus grains that have very high protein content like like rice or or, or wheat or corn. You know, these these you can cook into a porridge and it's gonna be really like sticky, really you know, like, like mud. Like flimmy. So um, yeah. So you know I, I think that you know to conclude I, Again, these are just three sample diets, but you know, uh, I guess to start, it's, it's a start. Like, you know, just just read through it and 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 think of how this would relate to, like, you know, would you be able to make a little stew for yourself using the, using the ingredients, you know? And, so, and if so, well, do it. You know, just like don't do the calcium and multivitamins and and, and eat it. You know, if it tastes good to you, and if your dog likes it. A teaspoon of it or a tablespoon, well, you're good. Uh, it might be, it should, be, it could become part of the rotation. And, and again, it's, you don't want to feed anything for too long. You need to rotate things every, you know, week, every two weeks, every month. Um, you know, nutrition, what you feed yourself and your dog should change over time as as external and internal conditions change. So, but hopefully, this would be a good. Startup for you, and, and hopefully, you know, maybe like a, a startup point to like think about, you know, like just because it says so on the internet, like, is it really true? Like, you know, what, what is the source of like the avocado or 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 garlic being poisonous to dogs? You know, again, have dogs been hospitalized because they ate a club of garlic? Absolutely, totally. You know, if the dog eats a whole bunch of avocados from the uh, you know, from the ground and happens to ingest lots of you know, some leaf particle, you know, some pieces of leaves and a, and a shell of the avocado, will they get toxic from it horribly? Like, they're probably going to die from it, so. It's bad for people, too. I mean, like, it's, well, we if you it. ate four cloves of garlic at once, you, oh, too, might you have some stomach. A, you would have such a hard work from it, you know, yeah. like, you'd be, you'd be right. running your milk, you know, or, or your, you, you, you want your cooling thing, right, to, you know, to, to go down your hot stomach, so. And again, you know, dogs eating dry food, you know, their stomach is so hot already. It's like a, it's like a hot, dry oven. You put, you know, oily heat in there. It's, it's like, it's like spraying hot oil on, on a very hot oven. It, you know, maybe like it's, it's gonna start cracking the peeling of that oven, and that's how you get ulcer. Mm -hmm. Marie, can you tell us where um, to find the video from this event and also with the handouts and yes. PDFs from previous lectures? So tonight, actually, we're going to post it on the Muttville Facebook page so you can download it. But um, 
permanently, it'll be on the Mudville website. Um, there is a page called Senior Dog Resources, and all of Adam's lectures are actually um, on that page. Um, this is number seven, I believe. Mm -hmm. And there's been, you know, we've covered from different traditional trains, medicine, topics to geriatrics. Arts, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I will, again, I'll, actually, I'll post that link on the Facebook page too, so everyone can just get it quickly, and I'll do that actually tonight. And this video will be available tonight too if anyone wants to rewatch it or share. Mm -hmm. I'll be on TV. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Alrighty. So we need to refresh this little one. Yeah.